So today I would like to go over a sample Java FX data binding tutorial. We're going to go over a couple of different ways to do unidirectional data binding in Java FX. Here I've got a sample application ready to go. We've got the FXML file as well as the controller. It doesn't really have a lot in it. You just see it has a button and a label and nothing is currently happening when we click the button, but we're going to change that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our controller and we're going to get a property ready to bind to our label. So we're going to use a string property and we're just going to give it a name. Now, the way that JavaFX is set up, the string property class is actually the abstract class, but you need to use an uh, instance of it here with the simple string property. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll just give it a default value of the initial value there. Okay, so this is great we have our string property here but it's not ready to be bound yet so we have to actually create getters and setters here for the FX um, label to reference and an easy way to do that here in IntelliJ I like my properties at the bottom of the file so I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna push um, alt insert and it's gonna bring up another menu here and I'm going to use the getter and setter and this is actually going to go ahead and create getter and setters for this value that adhere to the proper naming conventions. Um, so I don't have to worry about typing incorrectly. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So here, here you will see it actually creates three, um, three public properties here. We have um, a get text value that returns a string, then one that returns a string property and the set text value. So this is actually um, uh, a property where we can do a set and a set and a get. You might want to restrict that, but we're just going to leave it that way for now. We are going to go ahead and make this a final field. That's a pretty good practice. You don't have to do that, but it's it's good convention. So now we have this guy all ready to go, um, and we're going to set the property when the button is clicked. So here we can say set text value button clicked. And that's great, but when we run this, so we'll save and run, and you'll see that nothing's actually going to happen yet. So here we're going to click the button and it's still still not changing text. And also you'll notice it's not set to the initial value either. This is still set to the text value that we had put in the fxml file. So what we need to do next is we need to actually bind this label's text to this text value property in the controller. And there's actually two different ways that we can do this. I'm going to show you the code behind version first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in the sample fxml file and we're just going to go ahead and delete this text that we have already here. So we're just going to remove this. And we need to give this label a name so that we can reference it in the controller. So to do that, we do FX ID, and we're just going to give it a name. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually reference this label in our controller. Okay. So we're going to copy this. We're going to go over here to our controller, go up here to the top, and we're going to say at, well, let's give us a line here. So at fxml. Now this is important. If you can't, if you don't put this fxml tag here, it doesn't know to reference the value in the fxml file. Then we're going to do label and our label name. And you'll see that it doesn't know what label is here because we don't, we have not imported uh, label yet. So here we're going to do Alt Enter and make sure that you pick the FX 
label. You don't want to pick the swing label or it won't work. So we're going to grab that guy. Okay, so the label has been uh, been added here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the binding. So to do that, we're going to say label. And we're going to grab its text property. And we're going to bind, just a regular, a regular bind. And we're going to give it the text uh, value property that we created up top here. So text value property. And that's really all there is to it. So what this is saying is we're going to assign the text property of the label to this string property value that we're assigning in code. And now when we click the button, we're going to set that text value to um, button clicked. So let's just give that a go. So here now we can immediately see already that things are working because we have now the label is set to the initial value. And when we click on this button, you can see that the button clicked text has changed. So that's really all you have to do if you want to do a simple unidirectional binding um, in code. So now we're going to show you a different way to do it. Um, and this is actually going to be to hook up the binding through the FXML uh, code behind. Um, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just comment this previous way of doing it. We're going to comment that guy out. And we're going to leave the, the set text value because we still want to do that. We still want to change the text when the button is clicked. But instead of binding it here in the initialize me um, method, we're going to actually bind it in the FXML. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say text. So here we're, going to, we're doing the same thing. We're taking the text property. And now we're going to set it equal to the property in the code behind, in the, in the controller. So to do that, we're going to say controller dot, and see it's already helping you out here. It knows that the controller has a property available that's called text value. Really let the autocomplete help you here. So now this is doing the exact same thing we did before, only we're doing it here in the FXML file. We're setting the text value to the controller uh, text value property. So Again, that's this guy here. So let's just run it again. You can see the binding is working because we've set it to the initial value and that's showing up here in the label. And now we have, again, the binding updating to the text value um, that we've set upon click. So that's really all I want to go over in this tutorial. There's a lot more interesting things that you can do with data binding, which will go into more depth. Uh, and other videos. Thank you so much for watching.